Because of Mr. Terrapt, November. Luke. It was November. Apparently, that meant time for Mr. Terrapt to get crazy with his math ideas again. I think he was on a mission to put us through his math gauntlet. Dollar word. We're going to figure out the number of blades of grass on the soccer field, he announced one day. What? You're going to make us count grass? Peter yelled. That's nuts. No way, Nick was hollering. Dollar word. How are we supposed to do that, Tommy said. I raised my hand. Yes, Luke. You mean we're going to estimate the total number, right, I said? Yes. And no, Mr. Terrup said. We actually do some calculating to get a reasonable approximation. I'm beginning to think that Peter might be right. Yes, it's going to be difficult, but I know we can do it, Mr. Terrup said. Besides, if everything we did were easy, then you wouldn't learn anything. We need to be challenged in order to learn. Mr. Terrup was right about it being a challenge. None of us had any idea how we were going to count blades of grass, but we did. First, we decided we wanted to count 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter squares, which was my suggestion after Mr. Terrapt talked to us about sampling and how our government gets population numbers. Then we measured the squares on large pieces of cardboard and cut them out. So we were left with a piece of cardboard that had a 10 centimeter square in the middle. That was Mr. Terrapt's suggestion. Now it would be easy to toss our cardboard around the field and collect random 10 centimeter samples. So far, so good. Time to head outside. We marched downstairs and out the front doors by the office. Then we stamped down the sidewalk until the end of the building. The soccer field awaited us on the side of our school. Peter. She was bent over counting blades of grass. It was the perfect opportunity. Mr. T was busy helping someone else, so he wasn't going to see me in action. I gripped the cardboard with my best hold, dipped my knees a little, and let the frisbee fly. It zinged through the air on a mission like a missile from a fighter jet. Bullseye! Ow! shrieked Je Lexi. My tushy! I almost died of laughter. I dropped to my knees. I laughed so hard I couldn't stop. I couldn't catch my breath either. Lots of other kids were laughing, too. Lexi yelled something about her tushy and me being a jerk. Everyone that missed out was fun. On the fun, kept asking, what happened? What happened? Everyone except Mr. T. He came right over to make sure Luke Lexi wasn't injured. Lexi was holding her tushy and hopping up and down saying, ow! over and over. She's a total drama queen. Usually a teacher checks the spot that hurts, but I don't think Mr. T was real big on that this time. Peter, that's not funny, Mr. T said to me. Someone could have been injured. You're lucky you didn't hit anyone in the eye. Go sit down. I sat down. It was no big deal. If you'd been there, you'd agree. It was super funny. Luke, we spread out all over the place, tossing our cardboard squares and counting the blades of grass. Peter, however, was flinging his square like a frisbee, even though Mr. Terrapt had warned us that it was a toy and not, not wasn't a toy, and to be careful throwing it. Maybe if things had turned out differently that day, they would have turned out differently in the end, too. I think what happened on the soccer field just set us up for disaster later on. So, Peter was being his typical sneaky self, flinging his square and counting here and there. But as soon as he spotted Alexia bent over the square, he wound up and sailed a beauty in her direction. It was a perfect delivery, dollar word. That tattooed, dollar word, her fanny. Ow, she screeched, like what the heck? What happened, Mr. Terrapt instantly twisted dollar word around? Like someone just hit me in my tushy with their square, Alexia cried. The old buttocks again, huh? Mr. Terrapt said, you okay? Yes, 
Alexia said, and Mr. Terrup turned and looked it out at all of us. We were laughing our heads off, and I swear I saw him smile as he shook his head at the whole scene. Peter, come over here, please, he said. Why me, Peter complained, because we all know how much you like the buttocks area, don't we? Class took Mr. Terrett. Instead of blowing up, he was funny about it, but in a serious way. He sat Peter out of the rest of the activity and had a talk with him. Peter didn't pretend to be innocent, but like I said, I think this set up for the later. The whole thing seemed funny. No one got hurt. Peter was out. That was it. Once we finished tossing and counting, we headed inside, where we learned how to average all our data. Then we took our average number and used it to predict the soccer field total by figuring out how many of our squares could fit inside the field. The number of blades of grass in our soccer field equals 77,537,412. This isn't an exact answer, of course, but it's an accurate estimate based on all our calculations. Phew, I learned so much doing that project. It wasn't the stupid easy stuff I was used to getting from my teachers, that's for sure. We were math wizards, dollar word. Jessica, Act 3, Scene 1. Things weren't going well. I had betrayed Alexia by being nice to Danielle, thinking that this was what Bill Teal would have done. And then Danielle suddenly turned on me. Without warning, I knew Alexia was behind it. I was alone except for the friends I had in my books, like Belle and Anna. In November, Mr. Terrup introduced us to a book that the whole class would be reading, The Summer of the Swans by Betsy Byers. I had never read this one, or anything by Miss Byers for that matter. This book won the Newbery Medal back in 1971, Mr. Terrup said. He held the book up. It's not full of action like you guys tend to think of action but it is a beautifully written book that's going to give us an awful lot to think about, learn from, and maybe even change because of. I straightened up. I was excited. Peter moaned. As for Alexia, well, she was somewhere in La La Land. The boys made faces and the girls exchanged glances, and this Mr. Terrup went a step further. We're not just going to read this book, he said. We're going to do an activity with it, an ongoing activity, more like an experience. Now even Alexia was listening, back from outer space. What kind of activity, Peter demanded. Not some sort of stupid book project, I hope. I hate those. No, no, no project. I don't really like those things either, Mr. Terrup said. What did you have in mind, I wondered. You're going to make up and dress up as a character, aren't you, Alexia said. Oh, I love doing that. Get real, Peter said. Will you guys be quiet and let Terrup finish, Jeffrey said. That worked. No more interruptions. And Mr. Terrup continued. I want you guys to think about this book. In the story, there's a boy with Down syndrome. That's a mental disorder named Charlie. And his older sister, not much older than you guys, named Sarah. They have a pretty special relationship. That's what I meant, want all of you to think about. Mr. Terrup stopped for a second, yet somehow we stayed quiet. He continued, so what you're going to do is visit our collaborative classroom downstairs over the next few weeks. You'll go in groups in the mornings and the afternoons and simply spend time with these children doing what it is that they do. Mr. Terrup, I raised my hand. What exactly is the collaborative classroom? Still being relatively new to the school, I didn't know. It's where the retards go, Peter said. Alexia laughed. I hope you'll answer that question a little differently after this experience, Peter, Mr. Terrup said. His tone was very serious. Peter didn't say another word. It's a classroom for children with a range of special needs, Jessica, Mr. Terrup continued. Some of you are probably a little nervous or even scared. That's why you'll go in groups. I hope you'll feel different afterward, too. Act 3, Scene 2. My group consisted of Anna and Jeffrey. I still haven't quite figured Jeffrey out. On the other hand, I've been eating lunch with Anna ever since being ostracized by Alexia and her clan. Danielle was back in and I was out. But I didn't want back in. I much preferred my time with Anna. She's quiet, but she's a lot smarter than everyone thinks. She's the only girl smart enough to stay out of Alexia's nonsense. Her mom's advice, she told me, 
We haven't talked about her mom or any of the stuff I learned from Danielle, and I haven't told her anything about me either. For now, we've kept our secrets, and that's okay. I like Anna. She'd make a great friend to a character in a book or in one of Dad's plays. I know she's going to be a great friend of mine. We were very quiet on our first trip downstairs. Not one of us uttered a single sound. My hands longed to hold a book, but I hadn't brought one, so I bit my fingernails and cuticles instead. It's funny how when you're anxious to get somewhere, the journey seems to take forever. And when you're not too anxious, the journey is over in no time. My journey from California lasted about as long as the Viper roller coaster. And our journey to the collaborative classroom took no time at all, either. When we arrived, it was clear the teacher was expecting us. Hi guys, she said, welcome to our collaborative classroom. I'm Miss Kelsey. We introduced ourselves and then she led us inside. This is Joey, Miss Kelsey pointed to a little boy with boogers all over his face. Can you say hi to our friends, Joey? Miss Kelsey asked. Joey waved in our direction. A gigantic smile stretched across his face. And this is James over here, Miss Kelsey <sighs> said, pointing to a different boy. James looked pretty normal to me. He didn't say hi to us though. He didn't even look at us. This is Emily over here. The little girl Miss Kelsey pointed to was very cute. She had drool all over her face and her hands and arms and she moaned a lot. A different teacher used sign language as she tried to communicate with Emily. The teacher struggled to maintain her eye contact with her. She told Emily to say hi. That's Miss Warner helping Emily right now. Emily tried to say hi to us, but I could tell she wasn't particularly good at talking. There were a few other children in the room and Miss Kelsey eventually introduced us to us all of them. I became distracted at this point because Jeffrey had walked over to Joey and started playing the game memory with him. I couldn't believe it. I heard him say, that's a great job, Joey. You're really smart. And Joey smiled. Anna and I were on our way out with Miss Kelsey and James and Emily to help them do their jobs. Before we left the room, I saw Joey giving Jeffrey a big hug. Act three, scene three. Jobs turned out to be sorting the plastic forks, spoons, straws, and napkins for the cafeteria. Miss Kelsey poured the utensils on the table and James said, 712. I looked at Anna, puzzled. What do you mean, James? I asked. 712. He said again, looking down at the table. Does he always say 712, I ask? Figured he was yelling out random numbers. No, James is telling us that there are 712 utensils on the table, Miss Kelsey said. 712 utensils on the table, James repeated, this time looking at Anna and me and swaying a little as he stood. Great job, James, Miss Kelsey sounded so excited. You looked at our friends when you said that. Miss Kelsey, do you mean James is right, Anna asked. Are there really 712? Is it the same amount every day or something? Well, I haven't actually counted them to double check. And no, it's not always 712. But James has never been wrong before, Miss Kelsey said. Anna and I exchanged looks. I was confused. James had done the most amazing counting, but Miss Kelsey seemed more excited that he looked at me. I wanted to ask questions, but decided to wait. I didn't know if asking was appropriate. We finished up our jobs and walked back to get Jeffrey. Act three, scene four. Jeffrey was still playing with Joey as well as a couple of other kids now. He was helping them paint. Jeffrey, I said, he looked up. We have to go back now. Oh, okay. His shoulders slumped. He turned to the kids. I gotta go guys, I'll be back soon. And it was hug time. We thanked Miss Kelsey and headed back upstairs. We didn't talk on the way through the halls. I think we each had too many thoughts in our brains. By the time we reached our classroom, Jeffrey was grumpy Jeffrey again. Our very own Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I thought. Jeffrey. Peter called them retards and Alexia laughed like it was funny or something. I should have punched them then. It's a good thing they weren't in my group. I went downstairs with Jessica and Anna. They seemed a little scared, but I didn't say anything. We walked into Miss Kelsey's class and met the kids. They were great. 
Joey was full of love. All he wanted to do was play and hug me. He didn't get upset about anything, not even winning or losing when he played games. James was reading his this big book when we first walked in. I could tell he was real smart. I figured he was autistic right away because he didn't look at us or say a word. And little Emily was so cute. She needed lots of help. But who wouldn't want to help <clears throat> her? They reminded me of Michael. Just like the collaborative kids, Michael had the power to make you feel really good whenever you were with him. Love poured from him. I've never told anyone about Michael and wasn't gonna, but Jessica knew something was up. She's pretty smart. She notices things. After we visited the collaborative classroom a few times, she came up to me at recess one day. I was sitting at the edge of the field out where no one else ever comes. I was looking through my football cards, putting them in piles by position. You have a secret, don't you, Jeffrey? She said to me as she sat down. What are you talking about, I said. Who do you know with special needs? I kept sorting my cards. I tried to ignore her. I wasn't gonna tell her anything. Then she moved closer. I've got a secret no one knows about too. No one, not anyone at this school, she said. So why would you tell me, I asked, looking at her this time. I was reading this book, Ida B., and in, the, and in it, the girl finally talks about her, her little secret, and it helps her out. You're always reading, I said. The characters help me understand and think about things, she said. They help me know what to do. QBs, where was that pile? Is that why you handle Alexia different than any of the other girls, I said. I guess so. Well, you can tell me your secret. I'm listening. Can I look at some of those cards while I talk? She reached for my running backs pile. No, I pushed her hand away. Nobody ever touches my cards. She was quiet. I might have scared her a little. Sorry, I said. I'll just hold my book then. She was quiet for a minute. I waited and she took a big breath. My dad didn't come to Connecticut with us, she said. He directs plays and found a girlfriend at his work a beautiful actress from one of his productions. My mom decided we needed to get away from California and my father. So here we are. I kept sorting my cards, but I was listening and Jessica knew I was. After a few seconds, she kept talking. She had more to get off her chest. I didn't want to come, but my mom told me I had no choice. Boy, was I ever angry with her. Angry like I've never been before. I figured my dad was dumping her, not me. So why did I have to leave too? Silly, right? I could never live without my mom. I stayed busy with my cards because I didn't know what else to do. I didn't want to ruin it for Jessica. She had a lot to tell. So I stayed quiet. What I didn't know at the time was that my dad wasn't only dumping my mom. He was dumping me too. The last time I talked to him was back at the beginning of the school year. He phoned to talk to me, but he hasn't called since. I knew what it was like to have a parent that didn't talk to you. I had too, but I didn't know what to say. So I said, nothing. Then recess ended. Anna. I was pretty scared when Mr. Turup first told us about the collaborative classroom I didn't know those kids, only that they were gross and messy, but I didn't complain. I was happy when I found out Jessica was in my group. She and I have been eating lunch together. She's always reading and she's smart, but she doesn't act like a know-it-all. She tells me about her books if I ask without giving away too much of the story. I wasn't expecting or looking for a special friend, but Jessica showed up this year all the way from California and I like her a lot. I'd like her over to my house, but no one has ever come over before. I'm not sure what mom would think. I'll have to think about it some more. Jeffrey was in our group too. All I know about him is that he always seems mad at everyone. That wasn't how it turned out though. Jeffrey was nice with the kids, really nice. And I didn't feel scared because Miss Kelsey and Jessica were with me. Miss Kelsey knew I was nervous, and she helped me get used to everything a little at a time. I noticed she didn't wear a wedding ring. Mr. Terrup had a lot of options. 
Little Emily was so cute. I didn't want to touch her hands because she always had her mouth and slobbery spit all over them. But Miss Kelsey gave us a handkerchief to wipe her up, and every once in a while and then it was okay to touch her. I held her hand on the way to do the jobs and on the way back. She smiled at me, and then I felt like I was going to cry. I hadn't expected that. One day after everybody had been to visit the collaborative classroom at least once, Mr. Terrup decided we needed to discuss our group experiences. Mr. Terrup, I said before we got into a serious discussion, did you know that Miss Kelsey doesn't wear a wedding ring? Is that so? Yes, and neither does Miss Newberry from across the hall. I did know that, but thanks for those observations, Anna. And then Peter started in, ooh, tear up a newberry sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Okay, Peter, ha ha, Mr. Tarrup held up his hands. Enough of the matchmaking, though I appreciate you looking out for me, Anna. Now, how about sharing your experiences? I wanted to tell Mr. Tarrup that my mom didn't have a wedding ring, but he moved on. Jessica was the first to speak up. Mr. Terrup, why is James in that room? He seems really smart. Yeah, Peter said. He knew how many forks and stuff were on the table without even counting them. You should do some math with him, Luke. Not exactly a retard then, huh, Peter? Mr. Terrup said. No. Peter's voice lowered and so did his head. He's autistic, Jeffrey said. No one said anything. Probably because we were so shocked that Jeffrey had spoken at all and because we didn't know what he meant. James has some things that he's really into, and he knows everything about them, Jeffrey went on. A lot of autistic people have a special talent. James is great with numbers, but he has his problems too. Hey, we should have had him tell us how many blades of grass were on the soccer field, Peter said. Yeah, and like, then I would never got hit in the tushy, Lexia told him. Peter grinned, but that was the best part. All right, all right, you two. That's enough, Mr. Terrup said. How do you know all that stuff, Jeffrey? I said, even before I knew I was asking the question. I felt instantly bad. Jeffrey wasn't looking for extra attention. Jeffrey didn't answer. He was quiet again. Danielle. Lexi was in my group to the collaborative kids. Part of me was happy about that. Part of me wasn't. Things were a little confusing. Every time we went back to the collaborative classroom and every time we came back, Lexi would talk bad about Jessica, even Anna sometimes. Don't you think Anna belongs in this room? She's like so stupid, Lexi said one day. Even if I wasn't supposed to be friends with Anna, I knew she wasn't stupid. I knew because she was my plant partner and she helped me a lot during that unit. Plus, Anna was the only girl not involved in Lexi's schemes which made her brave, too. Like, Jessica should just stay down there. She doesn't have any normal friends, Lexi said. The weirdest thing of all was that Lexi was really nice to the boys and girls in the collaborative classroom. Joey loved her. Okay, Joey loved everyone, but he always smiled and hugged Lexi. And she was really patient with Emily, too. Seeing Lexi like that helped me feel more comfortable in the room, and I had a good time with the kids especially James. Jeffrey told us that James had certain things he was really into, and one of them was farms. His brain was crammed with information about tractors and machines and cows and milking, so I brought in a bunch of pictures from home and James went nuts. He spouted off facts nonstop as he looked at each picture. Udders, these are the cow's udders. Clean her off and use her teat dip. Next picture. Hey, find it in bales of rolls. It's hard to work Hey. Throw the veil off the wagon and put it on the elevator. Stack the bells in the hayloft. Next picture. John Deere tractor, classic green and yellow, lots of horsepower. James talked more to himself than anyone else, but that was okay. His mind was racing. When our time was up, I tried to take the pictures and he started screaming. Really screaming. Not words, just noise. Really loud noise. It scared me. I let go of the pictures and Miss Warner came right over and I got out of the way. He can keep him, I said. That's way nice of you, sweetie, Miss Warner said. James, can you say thank you to your friend? Arr! James yelled and struggled to free his body from Miss Warner. 
James has a hard time knowing when time is up and switching to another activity, she said. I felt bad for James, watching him have his meltdown. It's okay, I said. You can keep the pictures, James. Bye. More yelling and crying and screaming. I hoped he would calm down soon, but I had to leave. I wanted to go. I didn't like seeing that. The whole situation upset me, and I think that was what gave me the courage to say something. We had just gone out into the hall when Lexi started right in. Like, what a weirdo. He, we better fix him up with Jessica. She's the weirdest one in our class. Just stop it, I exploded. Why do you always have to be so mean? You're nice in the room with them. Why do you have to be mean now? Fighting back tears, I turned and ran down the hall. He likes cows, Lexi yelled after me. Maybe... He should date a cow like you then. Hot tears streamed down my cheeks. I ran upstairs and into our bathroom. Jessica was there. Are you okay? She asked as I came through the door crying. Here was my true friend. I knew it now. I'm sorry I've been mean to you, Jessica. I won't do it again. She walked over to me and we hugged. I felt better. Dear God, it's Danielle. I now know that Jessica is my real friend. I pray that you can help Alexia not to be so mean. And I pray for James. He was awful upset today. Please help him feel better and learn to handle when time is up. Thanks. Amen. Alexia. Like, Peter knew what he was doing out there on the soccer field, hitting me with that frisbee. So, like, I was constantly reminded that he would killed our plant. I told you so, I kept telling him. Yesterday, he told me to stop annoying him. Peter's always picking on me. I bet it's because he likes me. Like, all the boys think I'm so pretty. And then, like, my fancy clothes and sparkly lip gloss, they sure don't look at, at Danielle. Like, she got so upset with me. She's never yelled at me before. Must be she's getting braver as she's getting fatter. I'll have to fix things with her again. I do like going to the collaborative classroom. I don't have to worry about things out and down there. The kids in that room love you no matter what. It's nice. Teach had a good idea with that one. Joey likes my feather boas. I always wear them to his class so he can see them. Like, I think I'm going to ask if I can put lip gloss on Emily. I think maybe, like, she'd like it. Like, every girl should try lip gloss.